Hello there gaming dudes and dudettes. I'm Smith Kakarot and you're watching the 8-Bit Experience. Now, I'm sure pretty much everyone watching this video has heard of the Ninja Turtles, right? In the 80s and 90s, they were a major cultural phenomenon. You had Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, and of course, Leonardo. Well, in 1989, there was actually a game based on them made by Ultra Games. But first, before we talk about the game itself, let's talk about Ultra Games. In the late 1980s, Nintendo had some very strict rules regarding licensing Konami games for the North American market. One of these rules was that third-party companies were only allowed to release five games maximum a year for the Nintendo Entertainment System. To circumvent this, Konami created a shell corporation called Ultra Games in order to expand their library to ten games a year. Some of the games localized by Ultra Games were Metal Gear, its sequel Snake's Revenge, and Roller Games, as well as the first few Ninja Turtle games for NES and Game Boy. I guess that's why they call it a shell corporation. After the Super NES was released by Nintendo, Nintendo became more relaxed on how many games third-party developers could publish. This ultimately made Ultra Games superfluous, and the company was dissolved in 1992. By the way, notice how all the turtles have red bandanas on the cover? In the comics, the turtles all wore red bandanas instead of the different colors they wore in the cartoon. This means that this particular game is based on the comics. So, if you were hoping to hear the Ninja Turtles theme song at any point in the game, prepare to be sorely disappointed. Unless you didn't like the theme song to begin with. In which case, feel free to disregard what I just said. Anyways, on to the game itself. You play as all four turtles, whom you can switch between at any time. Donnie has the longest reach, followed by Leo, then Mikey, then finally Raph. This means that you'll most likely be using Donnie and Leo for most of the game. The enemies include foot ninjas, mousers, guys with chainsaws, and guys on fire? Dude, that's just metal, man! The music in this game ain't half bad either, especially the overworld map. I like that tune. You replenish your health by picking up pizzas. Speaking of which, if you eat a pizza, exit the room, then come back, voila! The pizza will be right there waiting for you. You might want to learn how to exploit this, especially for the later stages. Is it just me or the Turtles' walking animation similar to Simon Belmont's from Castlevania? Also. If you walk forward a short distance and then press up, your turtle will walk in place. It looks like they're shuffling. <laughs> so once you save April, you climb to the top of the dam and take a dive into the Hudson River. Your mission is to disarm eight bombs scattered throughout the stage, all while avoiding high voltage plants, rotating spikes, and getting tangled up in seaweed. If you get caught by that last one, then no one can kelp you. I know that most people will want to rush through this stage due to the time limit, but if you take your time and keep a cool head, you'll usually make it through with just a few seconds to spare. After that stage is complete, the turtles head back to their lair to find Splinter missing, just like in the movie. However, this game predates said movie by about one year, interestingly enough. By the way, I forgot to mention that there's several weapons you can pick up in this game. Weapons such as Shuriken, Boomerangs, Triple Shuriken, and a few other weapons that I wasn't able to find while recording. So, this game isn't bad at all, but damn if it isn't hard. Take this jump for example. If you fall into the water, you get carried out of the building, and you have to start all over again. Come on, jump, jump, jump! Gah! Yes, yes, yes! I made it! I made it! Ah, shit. So 
what's the verdict, dudes and dudettes? Well, it's good, but it's not great. You know, like Yonoid, it's radical, but it's not totally radical. It's um a decent game, probably about 7 out of 10 as well. So, um, there you have it. This has been the 8-Bit Experience. Thanks for watching.